Hello friends and welcome to Zionville. How Satan Works. On my bookshelf I have a colorful and interesting book called How Things Work. In its pages the inquirer can discover through many colorful illustrations and the text how things work. Washing machines, harvesters, light bulbs, water wheels, drilling rigs, microwave ovens, sewerage treatment plants, and on and on. It is indispensable if you want to understand our world and ourselves and how to use the tools we have. There is another book that I have, multiple copies in fact, that also tells inquirers how things work in relation to the universe, God, and Satan. As you may have guessed, this book is the Bible. Through many colorful illustrations in the text, we can know that our situation amid all the confusion in our world and in ourselves, all the confusion which comes from Satan, the author of confusion. This particular knowledge, which God guarantees, is indispensable to us if we want to make it to the heavenly shore one day and be a part of the eternal kingdom of God, ranging out across the universe of heaven. And the Bible gives us the tools we need in our battle with that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Revelation 12, 9. Let's have a look. How does Satan work? In a word, deception and its many cognates. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. 2 Thessalonians 2.10 So first we need to understand who he is and what happened. He is the highest, greatest creature that God created. But Satan wasn't created with the evil character that he possesses today. Oh no. When he was created, this mighty angel was known as Lucifer, and he was pure and holy. Then the name Lucifer means light bearer. He was God's messenger. He was to reflect and disseminate the light of God across the universe of heaven to all the inhabitants thereof on all the worlds. He was called the anointed cherub that covereth the throne of God. He was holy, just, and good. But Lucifer was self-deceived by reason of his brightness, Ezekiel 28:17, and fell from his lofty position. At his fall, he became Satan, the adversary. He convinced one-third of God's holy angels to switch sides and join his rebellion. They became fallen angels, demons, in the process. These rebels against the government of our benevolent Heavenly Father have been fighting tooth and nail for the supremacy ever since. Fortunately, our Father has already told us that they have lost. His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has gotten him the victory by his sinless life and his vicarious death for us sinners on Calvary's cross. Michael, pre-incarnation, the leader of the holy angels, is now Jesus, post-incarnation, the sacrifice for the sins of the world and our great high priest. And it is he alone that can face down the devil and his angels and win. And he already has. Victory is assured. It goes to the Son of God, not the devil. <clears throat> Now that we know these introductory points, again the question is, how does Satan work? What methods does he use against us? He wants us to fail and be lost like, at last like he is and destroyed like he will be in the lake of fire. He has an arsenal of weapons that most earthlings have no idea of and are in use that, that are in use against them every day. His desire is to get us to stay lost in our trespasses and sins me and you, and he can do that. And if he can, that is, he's got us. And he has one basic method of deception in all the chaos, confusion, and misdirection that he employs and empowers. There is often not much difference between the facts and the fakes. Just turn over some blocks. The main way that Satan works our destruction is this, knowing that human beings are notoriously ignorant of the scriptures on a personal level, he simply puts out his truths at 180 degrees variance, the exact opposite of the real truth as revealed by God in the Bible. I have found in my studies over the past 44 plus years that this is what he does consistently, all the time. I have never seen it to fail. So if you know your Bible for yourself, you will be equipped to recognize the arch deceiver's tricks as soon as you see them. When you know the truth of God thoroughly, you will always recognize the counterfeit. 
And now you know why Satan gives you every excuse in the world not to study the Bible, which devilish counsel is itself 180 degrees removed from what God says. He knows you'll unmask him if you really know the word of God. Learn and remember this point, and you will be able to meet the devil and defeat him on his own ground every time. I want this information to stay fresh in your mind, so only a few examples of it will suffice. God says in his word that he and his son created everything that exists out of nothing by their almighty power. The devil says, oh no, there is no God. All things evolved over billions of years following an initial explosion called the Big Bang. These two explanations of origins are 180 degrees at variance. God says in his word that salvation is by grace through faith unto good works, Ephesians 2, 8-10. Satan, on the other hand, leads people to do good works to appease God and thus gain salvation by their own efforts. But this is impossible. The real Jesus is unknown as false Christ of the devil's own creation take his place. These two explanations of how salvation happens are 180 degrees at variance. God says in his word that human beings sleep unconscious in their graves until the first or second resurrection. The devil says no, they are conscious after death and go to heaven or hell, or for Catholics, purgatory. These two explanations of the state of the dead are 180 degrees at variance. God says in his word that the nation of Israel has been set aside forever as his missionary agency due to apostasy culminating in the rejection and death of Jesus Christ, their Messiah. God also says that their work in the world has been given to spiritual Israel, God's obedient church. Satan says, no, the nation of Israel is still God's chosen people regardless of their apostasy and fruitlessness. And unfortunately, we hear this today in regard to the nominal Adventist church as well. These two explanations of who the people of God are today are 180 degrees at variance. God says in his word that the Antichrist is the dynasty of men called the papacy who puts its doctrines and practices in place of, anti in the Greek, Christ. But the devil teaches that the Antichrist is one man yet to come, and not the popes at all. These two explanations of who the Antichrist is are 180 degrees at variance. And friends, this is a very important issue today, as I'm sure you understand. God says in his word that he established the seventh-day Sabbath as the day of rest and communion between himself and mankind. Satan, through his papal Antichrist power, puts Sunday in place of, anti again, the Sabbath. Soon, he will enforce that by law worldwide with horrendous penalties for those who continue to obey God in true seventh-day Sabbath-keeping. These two explanations of the day of rest are 180 degrees at variance. I trust that you can see by now how Satan works, but here is yet one more example, the 180-degree switcheroo itself. He turns things around 180 degrees and deceives thereby as we've seen and shown. God says in his word that what his word records is absolute truth. No after supposition should be entertained. But that old serpent, the devil and Satan says, no, it happened this way, and then proceeds to spin yarns to deceive. He wants people to rethink things by insinuating doubts and deceive he does by this method. We already mentioned the Big Bang and evolution as one of the alternative theories and an after-supposition of how we came to be. Notice carefully what Paul said in Acts 17, 24 to 31. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with man's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. 
for in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath appointed and ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. Acts 17, 24 to 31. If you have God in his word as your bottom line always, you have no problem with what is truth, though it may take some time to understand this or that issue properly. Give him that time. Don't nail things down irrevocably until you truly know. But wait, there's more to Satan's lies today than that one about evolution, and it has become very big in our time. It involves so-called beings from out other worlds come to earth to create, help, or guide mankind. I'll say it right out. This is a deception and I have mentioned it in other videos. The, th the beings on the other worlds are holy and loyal to God. They are not coming to the earth. They, the God would not want them to, and they don't want to either. We are under quarantine right now because of our continuing sins. <clears throat> but men like Eric Von Doniken and Zechariah Sitchin have, have arisen since the 1970s to push and popularize this false idea invented by a children's science fiction author, Howard Phillips Lovecraft, in the 1920s. Riding the wave of the UFO craze of the 1950s, these three, through their works, have gained many adherents. Problem is, Scripture nowhere gives even the slightest hint that any of the things these men say are true. And though the theories of these men are false, People even try to use the Bible to prove them. Genesis 6 is always pressed into service in this regard, though it teaches nothing of the kind. It concerns the human race and its two divisions, the believing obedient and the sinning disobedient. That's the context. Nothing to do with aliens or angels. God's reality is so much simpler and it is pure because it is true. It is written, still stands as the bulwark against everything that stands against it, for man or devil. And the after suppositions, the Johnny Come Lately explanations since the time of the end began in 1798, should be a huge red flag to you. Once again, the two explanations of Genesis 6 are 180 degrees at variance. Therefore, in these false teachings and many, many more that could be cited, don't let Satan twist you every which way. As God says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. 2 Chronicles 20.20 20. His prophets from Moses to John form the biblical canon, and Ellen G. White is the messenger to the remnant. Know and follow their inspired writings and turn not aside. In this way, you will dwell under God's protecting hand now and dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 27, 4 and 23, 6. And it is a fact that when you bring scientific observation and testing, as well as your own experiences, under the control of Scripture, that everything harmonizes. Simply get rid of that which does not, and you are safely under God's hand. We want to be there. Amen. Remember, Jesus is coming soon. Let us be ready to meet him as he is. Believe his word is written. The words on the page. Maranatha. <laughs>